All right, let's, uh, let's get started. <clears throat> Today, we, <clears throat> as I said, we could talk about my favorite word in economics, oligopoly. Um, so what we've done so far in this course, in this section of the course, is, oh, I can't spell it, though. Holy God, holy. Uh, what we've done so far in this section of the course is talk about two extremes in terms of market structure. Remember, once again, to go back, we need market structure to pin down the firm's production decision. We talked about one extreme, which was perfect competition, another extreme, which is monopoly. But in fact, most of the world lives in between in what we call oligo oligopolistic markets. Oligopoly markets are markets with more than one entrant, more than one participant, but with a relatively small number of participants who have market power. So we could think, for example, about uh, the auto industry in the US. Okay, the auto industry in the US has probably 10 companies to control the vast majority of the market, or fewer than 10. There aren't monopolies. There's true competition among those companies. You can see from all the advertising during sporting events. Uh, nonetheless, uh, they, are, they have some market power because it's pretty hard to just start a new car company and enter. Okay? So we could think about these markets as markets that are sort of in between competitive monopoly. There's multiple firms, but there's still some market power. And what we're going to talk about today is that in these markets, firms, when you have multiple firms, they can behave both cooperatively or they can behave non-cooperatively. And it's going to turn out to matter a lot which they choose. So you have multiple firms. With perfect competition, there's no cooperation that goes on because we're all just price takers. We just do what we want to do. With monopoly, there's no need to cooperate because it's just you. With oligopoly, there's a deep question about whether you're going to cooperate or not cooperate with your rivals. And uh, we're, that's something we're going to focus on over the next two lectures. Now, to do so, we're going to need to, to turn to the major focus, the major development in economic theory over the past 25 years which is the field of game theory. Game theory is a fascinating topic that was not really a mainstream economic theory topic maybe 35 years ago, 30 or 35 years ago, but has become uh, the core of what goes on in, the, in a lot of economic theory. Um, and basically, that's what we'll focus on for the first start of today's lecture is game theory. Many of you have heard of this concept. How many of you saw Beautiful Mind? Saw the movie, so you guys sort of know the basic idea. You know John Nash, the story. Um, let's talk about, about sort of the underlying economics now of what's involved. Now, we think about a game. We think about playing any game, be it from any economic competitive game to a sporting event to a board game. The core underlying notion is the notion of a strategy. A strategy which is essentially uh, what you're going to do in that game, what your plan is, based on what your opponent's going to do. So you're thinking about um, what your strategy is going to be, how you're going to play that game, and that's going to depend on what your opponents are going to do, what their strategy is going to be. And so that's a very complicated, dynamic situation where sort of your decisions depend on your opponent's decisions, which in turn depend on your decisions, which in turn depend on your opponent's decisions. Okay, And that's why we're going to need these tools that we're going to talk about today of game theory. Now, the key with game theory is to develop what we call an equilibrium concept. It's developed what we call an equilibrium concept. So you can think of this in terms of games as sort of the point at which the game ends. Okay. In economic games, the equilibrium concept is the point at which all the players are satisfied. In particular, um, when the market is actually in equilibrium. Okay? So the most important way to think about the equilibrium concept is to think about the most famous example, which is what we call a Nash equilibrium. Named after Steve Nash, the point guard. No, I'm just joking. Named after John Nash. Um, and basically, what is a Nash equilibrium? It's when no firm wants to change its strategy given what the other firm is doing. So a Nash equilibrium is 
when no firm wants to change given what the other firm is what the other firms are doing you could think of that as sort of when the game ends or when the game is stable not ends but is stable is basically when given what all the other firms are doing you are happy with what you're doing then you're in equilibrium then everybody's satisfied and the market can roll forward okay when you're not satisfied with what you're doing, given what the other firms are doing, then you're not in equilibrium. The market can't roll forward. 